my name is Fitz, and um, I'm sure you've probably heard of the eight fallacies of uh, distributed systems, right? So the question is, what if they were actually true? Bear with me for a second. So here's a simple-ish program, and it's simple well, for reasons I'll get to in a second. And let's say it's for ordering something, for ordering an item on the internet. It's got three major steps. Initiating the order, say, to confirm payment, fulfilling the order, actually delivering it, and archiving it so that we actually have uh, a log of it somewhere else. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that things are unreliable, right? The creating the order can fail, the fulfilling the order can fail, archiving it can fail, creating the API can fly and clients can fail. Basically, the entire thing can fail, right? So naturally, we add some error handling. Okay, yeah, that's nice, but now our program crashes anytime any error shows up. So we make it better. And those API calls are still here, right? They're still buried underneath there. Those three steps are still here, but they're buried underneath everything. And so if we're gonna rewrite everything, let's rewrite everything. Let's make it into a series of message queues such that our program simplifies and just is a kicking off of the entire pipeline. Great, except it's not that simple because we also need handlers for each one of those uh, message queues. We also need to duplicate those so that we can handle load and single node failures. We probably want to replicate the message queues as well so we can distribute the load even further. We probably want to add monitoring and load balancing and more and more and more and more until this program is not quite so simple anymore. So this is all in place to handle failure, right? All in place to handle failure. So if we look at the program again, where we started, there's no error handling. Right. And in particular, a couple that I want to call out is if our process or node dies, we probably have to start from the beginning. And that limits our retryability in some ways. And if an API call takes a little bit too long, like fulfilling the order, that probably takes a long time to run. If that happens, we probably increase our chance that the node is going to die and probably have to start from the beginning again anyways. Okay. There are things we can do to mitigate this, but it ends up with that giant piece of code, right? So I want to talk about something um, with the open source program uh, project Temporal. Um, and this is something we call durable execution. Because no matter what happens, no matter how many times you have to retry, how long you have to wait, you want that thing to finish to the end, go to the end until at least once, right? And I'm sure many of you have either been given a diagram like this or probably written one of your own of the idealized flow that someone goes through series of decisions and steps that you have to take. And regardless of how long that takes, we want it to get to that final green box, the final step, no matter how long it takes, right? So here's that same program written in a temporal workflow. Now this is more or less a copy paste from the actual code that I'm about to show. And your question might be, hey, this is just wrapping everything in, in execute activity, right? We're just hiding stuff. We're moving things around. Well, here's what's in those execute uh, activities. Um, just some boilerplate for creating a new API client and calling the API and then returning unrecoverable errors. Like if the user doesn't have a card on file, we can't retry that and hope that they add a card in the meantime, right? The retries alone is not gonna fix that problem. So we're just gonna return that error. Now, um, as a reminder, here was that better code from earlier. So text size is different. Um, now, I, I want to show what that actually looks like, because seeing the code is one thing. Let's see it actually run. And so here on the right, I have that actual workflow code. So as a reminder, this is a, almost exactly what was on the slides from a moment ago. And we need something to actually run it. So I'm going to start what we call a worker, which is now running the code. And I'm also going to kick off this, this workflow. Usually you'd have this tied up for like a uh, user clicking on a checkout button or something like that. I've got it scripted for now, so it'll simulate that. And we get some indication here that things are running fine. Our, our first step runs, our second step runs, so third step takes a little bit longer, and then we're done. Great, okay, that seems nothing special about that. I'm gonna run it again, except this time, right after the second step starts, I'm gonna kill it. Right, because if I wanted this to uh, be resilient, restarting it again, I would like it to pick up where it left off. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show the user interface for, uh, for this. Naturally, we see that the, the first one completed just fine, and our second one is still hanging out running, waiting for that second step to start or do anything, because 
there's nothing running to actually run it, right? So it, naturally, it's going to be sitting there just waiting for it to run. While we're also waiting for it, I'm going to make a couple changes to the code. I'm going to add a print statement to that first step in the process, and I'm going to change our last message. We'll see why in just a second. Now, I'm going to restart my worker process. Note how that new hello gophercon did not show up. We start up right at the second step where we left off. And then once that finishes and we get our third step, we get a new message. So we did actually end up running the new code. And then once we go back into the user interface, we can see that that actual workflow did complete. And all three steps went from scheduled, started, completed to be done. So I have no retries in here. I don't have any polos. I don't have any timers. I don't have any distributed key stores. I don't have anything else here. And this workflow is being able to resume right where it picked up, picked up when the execution process died. That's what I've got. If you want some links, there they are.